All right, hello again. And uh, now we are tackling chapter two in the book. And this time we'll talk about boiler systems. So boilers do not work by themselves. They need a complete system for them to operate and generate steam. And that system consists of feed water system, fuel system, draft, and instrumentation and control system. We'll spend the rest of the semester talking about those systems individually and in very, very elaborate manner. I'm probably, if you ever work in a power plant, uh, which I did, you'll see that there's a lot of specialties depending on how big the power plant is. You'll see there's a group working on the feed water system. They know all the intricates of it, what parts goes in. There are people who are specializing in the fuel delivery systems, filters, and what have you. Draft system, which is basically the air coming in and the air coming out, and instrumentation. So uh, I don't know on what scale or power plant you will be working, but uh, for me, I've seen people who are just, there's a team just for instrument, uh, there's a team for the control, team for the fuel, team for the feed water, and again, there's people who specialize in preventive maintenance. So there's a lot of people involved in these. Uh, uh, little jobs and applications. So don't really fret if you don't know everything about every little thing. The book tries to get you an introduction on what are those systems, what do they need. Of course, you have to know the general part of all of them, but you're not going to know everything about every little thing in the plan. Once you go there, probably they will assign you a job and you'll know what field you will be uh, having specialty in. So, well, this is the objectives. We'll describe the system, the steam system used with the steam boiler. What kind of system do you have? They're going to be all the same. Describe the feed water system. Again, feed water system is one of the most important systems because if we run out of water, what happens? The temperature will start to increase gradually and eventually we will have a problem which means some damn explosion or the boiler will break and melt. Uh, let's describe the fuel systems used with a steam boiler. What kind of fuel system do we have? We have gas. Do we have fuel oil? Fuel oil number one, two, three, four, five, six. What kind of fuel oil do we have? Do we have coal? So again, the fuel is very important. Describe the draft system used with a steam boiler. Okay? Again, draft is the air coming in and the air coming out. Again, the instrumentation. That's a, a by itself. That's a complete course and uh, it's its own field but at least we will know what are the main components for instrumentation. So we'll start with the steam system. Let's look at this uh, picture here. It's kind of small but maybe you can look at your book. The steam system consists of all the fittings and accessories used to deliver steam from a boiler to a load. What is the load in this uh, Scenario. So load is what we are going to use the steam for. If the steam is used to a turbine to generate electricity, it, that is the load. If the load is used to melt some product, that is the load. If the steam is used to desalinate water, that is the load. So integrate in the load and how much steam do we need in terms of quantity and, and at what temperature and pressure. And temperature and pressure they go together. So the steam system also includes the condensate return system. What's the condensate? After the steam loses its power and pressure, it will become condensate, which is water. Steam has a lot of power and energy. Once it's, this energy is used, it will condense it and become into water, and this water will turn into a condensate. So here we have a steam drum, the collected steam in the boiler, going to a superheater which will add heat to the steam. More steam coming in, main steam stuff valve, steam line, steam being used here, and this is, a, this is my load. All these valves need to regulate the steam coming into the load because the load requires certain pressure, temperature, and amount. So the load is using the steam, and eventually after the steam is used, it's going to be turned into condensate. The condensate will, uh, be locked in the steam trap to allow some steam to escape or go back, and only water will go to the condensate line. 
That's a uh, nice example. So, if you notice now, the steam system is a closed system. The steam system is a closed system, meaning that all the work has been done inside the system and the water should be the same. Like whatever water you put in the system, it will go into the steam, it will go into the condenser and come back again, and it should be the same amount of water. So it's a closed system, the steam should not be escaping the system. Think about your car water system. In your car, you put radiator fluid, it does the cooling, sometimes it does turn into a steam, you go to the radiator, come back, and probably a year will pass by, and the same amount of water did not change. For power plant, it should be the same. The water should circulate and move back and forth, and should not be any, any uh, losses. Uh, this is ideal. We do lose some steam sometimes for the blowdown, so we have to compensate for that. What's a blowdown? Every day, after the steam operator for 12 hours, we will drain some water, because it has a lot of uh, sediment in it, where are those sediments coming from? It's from the boiler itself and the metal reacting and some kind of salts condensating. So there's a blow down system where we have to let some water out to clean. If you have a steam system for heating in your house, probably you do that once a year. You go down and let some water out of the boiler so it will, be, and you can see the water coming all brown and dusty. And you will replace that probably a gallon or two uh, per few cycles. So it's not that much. So the feed water system is always going to be there. If you're going to let some water out, you always have to bring some water in to maintain the equilibrium of that system. OK. Uh, there are some details here regarding like, where everything is. You don't have to worry too much about those locations because they are, they are different from one steam system to another. Uh, what you have to, let's say what, what do you need to remember about this? I will start with the, so this is the feed water. It's going to, it's my, my first reservoir, boiler, steam coming in, load. and say, then go back to feed water. Of course, you have, sometimes you have one, two, three, four, you have five, we have seven. Uh, blow down. What's a blow down? Is when we try to remove some of the dirty water out of the boiler every cycle. Uh, I guess it depends on how much you run the boiler and every flight has its own blow down schedule. And then we have to have some feed water coming in. So the feed water always have some makeup water. Okay, so this is some of the main things that you want to look into. And the book has a lot of details about those steps, but I don't think you have to remember all of them. So feed water system must supply the amount of water you need to maintain the normal operating water level. Uh, again, I'll go to the example of a steam boiler in the house. Probably if you go in your boiler, you will see that there is a certain amount of water that has to be maintained in the system. If it goes low, you will have to make it up. Uh, it makes sense. In your car, probably you have the same thing. You have, uh, if you look at your water storage in your, under the hood, it will say low and high, and you're always going to make up the water as lost due to evaporation or sometimes leaks. Hopefully, it's not leaks. So low pressure gas uh, systems, the rate of combustion is controlled by the amount of air supplied to the, the interior. So this now is talking about the low pressure gas system where we have gas as our fuel. And low pressure system is safer than high pressure systems because the possibility of gas leakage is minimized due to the lower pressure involved. So there's not a lot of gas leakage because we are trying to pump gas 
using a Venturi system. Uh, I don't know what is what we have to take from this, but uh, just piece of information about like how the gas system operates. But uh, let's not focus too much in that. Uh, so what they are trying to depict here is the the basic control elements of high pressure gas system are the gas pressure regulator. So the way I want to think about that is how we control the gas coming, for example, into your grill. Your gas grill has a lot of pressure. Right? And when you buy the gas grill, usually there's a regulator on top of it. There's a valve, there's, there's a membrane valve that regulates how much pressure comes out of the cylinder. And if you go into your grill, there's another valve that regulates how much gas goes into your grill. And uh, the, the main point for the regulating the gas, you don't want too much uh, pressure, because gas is combustible and flammable. If you uh, skip on the safety devices that regulate your pressure problem, you have too much pressure pumping into you, your system. For uh, fuel oil, so now we're talking about supply for fuel. Uh, we basically, fuel oil is, is liquid, especially number two. And we have to supply to the boiler at the right temperature and pressure. And all this has to do with viscosity. You, do, you want the, the oil to be at the right viscosity and density so it will be pumped through the nozzle at the right rate. So for gas, you have, we want to maintain the pressure. And for oil, we want to maintain temperature and uh, pressure as well. If we're dealing with coal, which uh, more common than you think, there's a lot of coal, and the coal sometimes pulverized, sometimes it's not. Uh, depending, I think most of the plants now they have pulverized coal, which means like it's powdered. Uh, it's very fine powder, and it's uh, moved through a conveyor belt into into the combustion chamber. And sometimes it's also blown into small, small little pellets. And I've seen in some plants that the coal is actually pumped like fluid through some liquid to make it more combustible. Uh, coal is has one of the has actually the highest energy density of any other uh, fluid. By energy density, we mean, I'm going to write this down. The amount of BTUs, what's BTU? British Thermal, thermal Unit, which is the amount of uh, energy we can store in, uh, in any substance. So BTU is measure of energy. BTU is in uh, unit of weight. So that's the energy density, how much you have per kilogram of uh, any product. <coughs> so again, when, when uh, coal is pulverized, it's very flammable, and uh, becomes kind of like gunpowder. So it's very, there's a special precaution has to be taken when we work with coal. So we talked about coal, uh, but water system. We talked about fuel delivery in a nutshell. As you, as you have seen, it's very, very short. Natural draft, now we're talking about the draft system. The air coming into the system to do the combustion and coming out of the combustion chamber. Uh, natural draft is basically where hot air goes up, cold air goes down. So the hot air here will move from the low pressure, which is the cold, all the way to the high pressure. It does not require any kind of uh, mechanical apparatus. It's going to always be natural by itself. For example, if you open the window in the top floor, the air will all be pulled up. You don't need any fan. So natural graph happened in some combustion chambers where we just, the combustion is happening here, so the hot air is going to, uh, it's going to go up by itself without need of any inducers. In some cases, we need some inducers, and here we have some fans. So we have dampers and fans where we have to force the draft out, and that's very necessary sometimes when you have a very long chamber. So it's uh, necessary sometimes to have the chamber. Uh, induced draft, 
again, when you have low pressure and we have to go against the nature because now I have to push the air down, so I'm gonna need to put that through some kind of inducer fans to push it all the way through. This is another example where we have a combination of force and natural draft going through the, uh, the draft system or the air system where you want to direct the air coming all the way to the combustion, all the way down, and some of them go down all the way, and some of them might return as uh, recycled heat. So you can have a competition between natural draft and forced draft. So what you want to remember from this section here is the two types of draft, one of them is natural, that is controlled by density, and one of them is forced. Uh, so instrument, in a nutshell, again, this chapter is just giving you, is just giving you a taste of uh, what is the com main components of, of a water system. So we talked about, just to reiterate, steam system. Feed water, fuel, four is draft, five. What do they do? So, probably a long time ago, they used to have cable who shut down the things on and off manually. So we had to have more manpower in the plant. Now we have a lot of what we call a controller. It's a black box for us. Uh, we know what it does. We know what is the input and output, but we don't know what's inside. It's a PLC, Programmable Logic Control. So what it does, it, it has the input is the we have input points. We do connect our pressure points. We have the pressure here, the airflow, the fuel, the gas flow. So based on those inputs, it will do some kind of decision making. And we have control. Are we going up in more gas for more fuel? I described the, the PLC in border border as the cruise control in your car. You go in the highway, you put your cruise control, and it will monitor your speed. And based on the speed as the input, it will increase gas or sometimes hit the brake just to maintain that speed. So for us, it's the same thing here. The PLC will control the output of the, of the pressure. That's what I want, is my pressure. And what is the airflow I'm having now? And how much gas? And based on that control, what is the output? It will control the gas valve, which we compare to the car as the, the gas valve. And here, is the uh, gas valve, and we have also the gas line, how it's controlled, and also the air supply. How do we get the air supply? So your air supply is the main control. Again, in your car, if you hit the gas, the gas is completely, completely connected to your, your airflow, so it can be done. So basically, it's kind of like the cruise control of your border. Okay, this is what I have for the lecture for chapter two. I hope you can read the book and get some information and put some feedback on the blackboard. What I want to go over now is the study book. Again, these, wanna, these questions you might, you might wanna go over and if you need a solution, let me know. If you have any questions about them, let me know. Uh, here is the math, applied math section. So this is basically a lookup just to, just to show you what is the relationship between pressure and temperature. So, and if you look here, you'll find the, the gauge pressure, absolute pressure, which is like a conversion. So the pressure goes with the temperature. And based on that, you can find what's called the sensible heat, latent heat, and total heat, which is the energy content of the steam. It's very, very fascinating. And this is how we calculate the work that has been done by the turbine. It's not a really big deal if you don't really have a full grasp on it, but you 
can read through the example and tell me if this something makes sense to you at all. So a boiler is operating at 30 psi. How much heat is needed to preheat feed water from 153 to 30 Fahrenheit? It seems like a little bit uh, complicated, but it's not. So let's take a, let's take a look at it and uh, see what, what is supposed to happen here. So we have a temperature difference between 230 and 153. And we're keeping the constant pressure. And this is the amount of heat that is required and they're asking us how much heat we need to, to preheat the feed water. So feed water, to convert water to gas, is that sensible heat or latent heat? First of all, if you don't remember, what is latent heat? Latent heat is the heat that is responsible for changing the phase from gas to liquid or liquid to gas. That's latent heat. Sensible heat is when you change the temperature of something without changing its phase, which means like state. So if it's hot water and we want to change it, change its temperature from 153 to 230, is that latent or sensible? It's still feed water, and I'm mentioning it's steam, so this is the, uh, sensible heat. So from temperature of 150, which I'm gonna say is around here, and this is my sensible heat, it's 120. So if I want to get technical a little bit, let's see, at 153, degree, my HF, which is the sensible heat, is 120. And that's probably the key to kill down, but I will leave it at that. And we said to 230, which is 198, 198 degree, and that, where's my HF here? Is 230, no, this is 230 degrees. Give me HF of 120. So 120, so to subtract, that's 198 minus 120, I get 78 kilojoules per gram. How much heat, heat is needed? So I will say in this, in this sense, it's going to be 78 Probably, what is the, the unit here? If they're giving us the unit, yes, BTU per pound. So it's going to be BTU per pound of feed water. Okay, so basically this, this uh, table, it's about calculating energy. I know I'm kind of simplifying it and it might seem to you a little bit more uh, complicated than it is, but it's not. So gauge pressure, which is the pressure plus the atmosphere, absolute pressure, which is comparing to uh, P, uh, atmospheric pressure. Uh, if you look at the legend here, it tells you this is PSI absolute, and this is gauge pressure here, which is Hg, vacuum, that's in gauge, it's not PSI, this is inches of mercury, this is PSI. Temperature is in Fahrenheit, if you look at the units, you'll see it here in the bottom. Okay. What happened here? Uh, okay, it's not showing, but uh, if you look at the book in the book at Page 12, probably you can look at this table, and if you have any questions, you can send me an email, and I'll make another video about that as well. Thank you.